basically these three formulas enabled us to get a handle on what we were working with. So stress is force divided by area, strain is change in length divided by length, and then the one that relates those two things together, uh, Young's modulus is stress over strain. And with that, we were able to calculate uh, type of area you'd require to carry a particular load, or what sort of elongation you'd get in a, in a uh, particular setup. There's a couple of things I just want to mention here to do with actually how this is applied in, in real life. So for example, when you get into a lift, you often see a little certificate in the lift that says something like, uh, this lift can hold 15 persons or 2,000 kilograms or something like that. And the way that's worked out is using exactly these sort of things. So you have your situation where you have your lift with your lift cables that are holding the, the lift up and you're putting your 15 persons inside not much of a neck on that one. There you go. Um, so you're getting all your, your people squashed inside. <coughs> and that gives you a load. So the load force effectively is the number of people and the um, container, lift box. And the area is going to be the cross sectional area of the cable. So that in this case, there'll be two cross sectional areas that you'll be you'd be looking at, so that total area gives you A, so you can work out the stress that's going to be on the lift cables, and if you know something about the material that they're made of, you can work out the strain and you can work out the extension in the, in the lift cables. There's a concept called ultimate tensile strength, UTS is how you will see it referred to, ultimate tensile strength. Or ultimate tensile stress. And this is the amount of stress that the material, so in this case the lift cables, can take before they actually break. Clearly, you don't really want to load your lift up to the point where they break. Okay? So if the certificate on the wall in the lift has been done with a calculation based on the ultimate tensile strength, and you load it up to exactly what the certificate says, and you put one extra person in, so you've got all the people in, and then someone brings their cat in, okay? the cat is going to break the lift. And you've got the right number of people, but a cat is going to go over the limit, and the lift's going to plummet. That would be a really bad way of doing it. So the ultimate tensile stress is not what's used to calculate the load that the lift can handle. Okay, So when they go through and do the calculation, it's not the ultimate tensile strength that they're putting into this formula to work out what the force or load can be. There's something different. And what the difference is, is what's called a factor of safety. Okay, so what happens is when the calculations are done, the engineers know what the ultimate tensile stress is, so they know how much the lift cables can theoretically hold, and then they go, we're not going to load it up that much. We're only going to load it up this portion of it. And typically, a factor of safety for live loads, so lifts, things with people, is often around about five. And for dead loads, they were talking about just uh, goods when there's no life at stake type of thing, will be three. Okay. So in a lift, theoretically, you should be able to fit about five times the load that the lift certificate says before it actually is in danger of breaking. Um, good luck trying to fit 75 people into a lift, and it's clearly not going to happen. Um, but that's the way the calculations are done. So they know what the ultimate tensile strength is. You can look it up on uh, websites like Engineering Toolbox. It'll have Young's modulus and also the ultimate tensile stress for a particular material. And then they divide that by the factor of safety, and they come up with what they call a safe working stress. Okay, so the safe working stress, and that's equal to, so the safe working stress is the ultimate tensile strength divided by the factor of safety. And this safe working stress is what they pop into the stress formula to go with the load and the area of the cross section to work out what's going to actually happen. So you know the ultimate tensile strength theoretically for a material, you divide it by a safety factor to make sure you don't get anywhere near the, the breaking point, and you come up with a safe working stress, which is what you use in the formula. Okay, so 
you're probably see a question that has these sort of language in it. You need to get the one you want to work with as the safe work mistress. Okay, so you need to do whatever jiggling around you need to do to figure out that, and that's the one you actually work with in the, the application. <coughs>